We are allergic to bitumen. It's boring, hot in summer, and not pleasant on the skin if you jump off your bike and go sliding along it for a while. But when you live in a big city, it's usually at least an hour's drive until all the decent dirt roads start. So we zigzag our way out of town, looking for anything that makes the trip out more interesting and gets us off that boring blacktop. We keep it all legal, but through the outer suburbs, we will ride along maintenance tracks for the power lines, around the power station itself, and any roads that are still technically open to the public but have fallen into disrepair. Then once we clear the city limits, there are all sorts of little odd public roads that run between farmers' paddocks and a great fun if you don't mind opening and closing the occasional gate. These are the signs I like, end of maintained road. It still looks pretty maintained to me, at least for an adventure bike. <laughs> Eden almost went for a slip. Can't believe on these 950s, these guys are never very far behind. The guys whip them along at a good pace. A few times we've come through here, it's been pretty foggy and uh, <laughs> she slips around a lot. We've found most of these tracks by using satellite images in Google Earth to find them. Then check with Google Maps and other resources to confirm they are still technically public roads. Then we just put the resulting file in the GPS and head out to see if we can get the bikes through there or not. The old school approach was just to poke your nose down anything that looked like a track, do lots of backtracking and hope you didn't wind up on private property, pissing off the owners. Personally, I like using technology for this sort of exploring, especially when it means you don't wind up trespassing by mistake. He's throwing rocks at me. As most of you know, full-force racing components on the Sunshine Coast are modifying the DR's suspension. They've just done the first level of budget mods. The suspension's way better now, just uh, on chopped up stuff like this, very smooth. The revalved rear shock, awesome. But as expected, <laughs> a simple change of springs and heavier fork oil on the old rod forks hasn't worked all that well. Fuck his game! I wouldn't want to do this shit on a 950. It's definitely a big improvement, but it's all a matter of compromise. I'm messing around with spring rates and fork oil, but you either get them working well on the small stuff or the rough terrain, but not both. I will report back when we hit on a workable compromise. How good is this? This is why I adventure ride. You'll be lucky to see mountains over 2,000 metres in Australia. So those hills in the background probably look pretty small to Europeans and Americans. Just like our genitals, our mountains are much smaller than average over here. We Aussie dirt riders do suffer from mountain envy as well as penis envy. So out here, about 60 kilometres from the city, this is where you can simply link up all the dirt roads and mostly avoid the bitumen if you want. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but most of us like to head down some rougher tracks for the challenge, if we find any. If Eden can find a single track, he will. 
Eden's uh, in the same trials club as me, so he loves bringing the 950 into this sort of stuff. And, uh, stuffing around, trying to not to put a foot down. Another fun ride. It's great to be back on adventure bikes again after a year off. Now I just need to find that cream to get rid of the nasty rash I got from riding on too much bitumen into and out of town.